everybody and welcome back to NASCAR Thunder 2003 career mode. We're back at the Lowe's Motor Speedway for the Coca-Cola 600, which is also a Winston Noble 5 race, which we are eligible for. I know Mark Martin, the winner from the last race, is eligible as well. Uh, no idea who else, though. So we come out of turn 4 here to complete our first lap. If you missed our last video... We ran in the Winston, and we had a really strange experience where cars were on fire and stopped on track, but no yellow was flown. And then, of course, we did not actually make it to the final segment of the Winston, but Kevin Harvick, after what has been a shocking 2023 so far, partially thanks to us, finally got something good happen and won the Winston. So we come out of turn four here. Car handling really weird here on this lap. Crossed the line. And it's going to be P12 for the race. Not bad. Welcome, everyone, to Charlotte, North Carolina. It's time once again for the running of the Coca-Cola Racing Family 600 here at Lowe's Motor Speedway. And MRN is here to bring you all the action. Barney, this is a hometown crowd for a lot of these drivers. This track was the first one to focus on spectator comfort, and it shows. This place always draws an enormous crowd. Most of the team shops are located in this area, which give it that hometown feel. We're in for some great racing here at Lowe's. The 133 car comes to the track with the hopes of maintaining his top five points position. Who? Gaining on the leader is tough when you are in the top five in points. It takes you having a good race and the leader having a bad one in order to gain anything substantial. The 98 car looks to turn his luck around in this race. He definitely needs a good finish, not just for himself, but for the team, his sponsors, and everyone else involved with that team. Something a little out of the ordinary in this one for Jeremy Mayfield. Yeah, he was due for one of these bad starts, though. Nobody can start up front all year. You're going to have a bad qualifying run now and then. lot to unpack there from that MRN pre-race. Um, first off, what a group of cars we have towards the front here. The 133, the 98, the 46, and ourselves. Uh, number two, no offense to Pete Cook, but I am almost positive this is the first time we've seen him all season. Not exactly sure who they're talking about who's in the top five, because I can almost guarantee it's not him. But either way, green flag here at the Lowe's Motors or Speedway. We are underway. I'm pretty sure I said the name of the track. It sounded like I slurred it. Down to P13 here. The start of the lap here is we get our way through the gears pretty slowly, but we're going to work our way underneath the 10 and the 46. And now we're up a spot into P11. See how quickly this 133 car falls back. They've already lost quite a few spots there as so we get underneath Jeff Gordon and Casey Kane. Kane holding steady on the high line for now. Here comes Rusty Wallace. Whoa, bit loose there out of turn two. The car is pretty loose on the start of the run. That's why you've been seeing what seems like erratic driving from me because the car is just kind of all over the place. But it tightens up as the run progresses as we make a little bit of contact there with the outside wall. Gordon and Junior following me through here on the 98 car as we set our sights now for the five now if we don't win this race no worry we just miss out on the million dollars all we need to do is finish in the top five and we qualify for the next noble five race which happens to be at daytona and while we didn't weren't eligible for it last year so we make contact with junior and he goes up the track it is how we qualified for richmond and talladega last year which of course are the places we've won so far this season so Still plenty of opportunities for us to get a couple million dollar bonuses this year after we came so painstakingly close to winning it at Las Vegas. Another thing I forgot to mention, we will have an engine upgrade after this race. Uh, we'll have to build the new engines, of course, with those. Whoa, sorry, Terry, didn't see you there. As we uh, need to build the engines with those upgrades. But I think after this, our R&D department's going to focus on the chassis, maybe on tire wear. That's been a bit of an issue for me so far this season. 
It's Jeff Gordon flying currently. He's all the way up now to Kurt Busch as we currently work on Bill Elliott here. Let's see if we can get underneath him here into turn three. Just get underneath him here. Going to be close coming out of four here. He's going to have a bit of a run here on the high side. We'll hold on to this spot for now, but we should be able to take it here heading into turn one. And we do. So now we're going to try to work our way up here to Kurt Busch. And then it looks like it will be the 133 of Pete Cook. Well, though, Bill Elliott, he's not done. He's having a say again on the high side coming out of two. Hold him off for now, but looks like we might drag him with us up here to Kurt Busch, who we are closing in on. And I'm very excited for this next engine upgrade because clearly it's been helping us a ton. And you can see just how much better we've been in recent events at some of these tracks, you know, qualifying on pole at Richmond and Talladega, really doing well at Talladega. And a good run at Texas, even though I had the speeding penalty, still had great pace at Texas. So we now work our way in for 97. We ran well here last year as well, but not as well as we are right now. Definitely a stronger, more consistent car as the AI really slow down for some reason. I think something happened with the six of Mark Martin and for some reason, all of the AI in the area just slowed down a ton. But that moves us up to P4 for now, ahead of Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon. We got back past Gordon. Although that does leave the top three with a huge gap up front. That'll be very hard to uh, catch. I don't expect to stay in front of the 6 and 24. They are definitely faster than we currently are, but that was really strange what happened. Is it, they did. They just came to crawling speed all of a sudden through 3 and 4 there. So we whoa, slide up the track a little bit. Didn't mean to there. Car starting to tighten up here so hard to get the balance right it feels like at this track is way on the brakes there trying to hold off the inside because that is clearly where Gordon wants to go as we smack the wall and here comes Pete Cook the only uh, fantasy driver I know the name of thanks to that MRN piece so, oh bit of contact there with Gordon thought I was clear I'll tell you what this 133 car is driving like he's in the top five in points Holding uh, his own here, currently in P6, P7 here. After starting on the outside of the front row, expected him to drop back a lot more than what he has. Just gotta try to hold off Gordon here as well on the high side, although he's gonna get to us. Gotta hope we can still be with him here into turn one here. Gordon enters turn one really high as we slide up the track just that little bit again. Try to take the air off his nose there. Right alongside two by two battle here at the Lowe's Motor Speedway. Some good stuff here. Try to make the 24, run as high as possible as we make a bit of contact. Just trying to make sure we can hold him back here. One and two, definitely our strong corner. Just need to block right now. That's all we can do. Mark Martin getting away little by little. So we're halfway on fuel. Probably going to pit a little bit before lap 20 to try to undercut some of the field. But right now, this is a really intense time holding off Jeff Gordon, Dale Jr., and Pete Cook. As it almost kind of seems like we're starting to reel back Mark Martin as the 24 finally loses that momentum on the high side, falls in line here, single file for now. That's what I'd like. I'd like it if they could battle each other a little more or if they could just run single file, but as the 133 went high in three and four, just gonna get freight trained by the 24 and the eight. And they're back single file behind us. Whoa, Jeff Gordon into the wall. No caution, he didn't wreck or anything as we smack the wall. But Jeff Gordon gets loose in the trioval, smacks the wall, and slows down and might have collected a little bit of Pete Cook as well. So now it's just going to be us and the Budweiser Chevrolet, Dale Earnhardt Jr. to duke it out for P5. 
And I'm thinking maybe about five laps time we'll come in and pit. Looks like the end of lap 17 for the, some of the people are going to come down pit road. We're on lap 18 ourselves. So we're going to go ahead and come down pit road this time. We should be able to make it to the end, no problem. Mark Martin's going to go ahead and come on in as well as Dale Jr. And no speeding in the pits. Uh, going to leave the car as is and just leave it up to the crew. While there was no damage to the car, we did lose a sizable amount of time there, thanks to Dale Earnhardt Jr. Of course, I can't really blame Jr. for that. That's just the way the AI works on pit road in this game, which I don't quite understand. Which is, that's why I like games where they let you drive on pit road, because you can avoid stupid shit like that. But we've lost a good amount of time there to Dale Jr., so gotta hope the undercut can help us somewhere, or at least not lose a ton of time as the 97 nearly loses it coming into the pits. So we'll see where we shake out at the end of all this. Well, if you want to know how much time we lost, thanks to that incident with Dale Jr., Jeff Gordon, who was a mile behind us after crashing into the wall, is now in front of us, along with Tony Stewart and now Kevin Harvick. And now we've got this group to deal with here as the car has just become undrivable all of a sudden. So this race going downhill very quickly. Hopefully the car comes to us here quickly uh, and we can get some of these spots back. But right now, outside of the top 10, which we definitely don't deserve in this race, the goal for myself was to get stay in the top 20 throughout this race. But right now, I, I'm going to be a little pissed if we don't get this top 10. But the car just always seems so much different after the pit stop. And once again... Pit Road has absolutely screwed us in NASCAR Thunder 2003. We try to pit early and it doesn't even matter anyway. Because you'll the game will still find a way to screw you. And I just don't understand why. Again, it always seems like we're so much slower after a pit stop. But let's see here if the car comes back to us at all. Because, whoa, McKenseth! In the background, just blew an engine as we make contact with the 49 and come to a dead stop. What the fuck was that? It, we made the slightest bit of contact and it's like our cars were attached. It went straight up to the wall and basically stopped us both. Then the 17 blew an engine and got rammed by the 97. No caution for that. This game is like it's losing its mind. Not sure if it's from the damage or what, but our car is about two seconds off the pace of our best lap from earlier, running consistently in the 32s. And it's just been a yo-yo of different cars trying to get it up to me. Luckily, they got loose and uh, was able to break away for a little bit, but you can just see just how much slower I am than everybody. So right now, it's just a game of trying to hold these guys off. But yeah, I don't understand. I mean, for one, we just slowed down a ton after the pit stop in the first place. But then that weird incident with the 49 where, again, it's like our, our cars just lock together with that little bit of contact. You can see both the 49 and 97 who are trying to get past me have damage. 49, of course, it was from our battle. And the 97 was from the incident with his teammate. There's a bit of contact there with the 49. Man, I am just, I am not making any friends this season. It's a good thing I'm not playing uh, NASCAR Thunder 2003, or 2004, eh? Because I would have a long list of rival drivers. So it looks like we are going to finish top 20 probably, even if quite a few guys get past me here. 
Man, the car is not driving well as it shoots me up the track, just keeping it out of the wall there. So now I'm trying to defend from both the 97 and 28, but just a couple more laps to go. You can see the leader is actually not too far behind here. A lot of cars a lap down, as you can see by the mini-map, as Ricky Rudd trying to do something on the high side here. A little bit of contact there, just trying to slow him down, I guess. Slide up the track in three and four. Comes Kurt Busch down on the inside. Smallest bit of contact there. Keep him behind by for now, but looks like Ricky Rudd is going to start taking off from us here after he gets past the seven car. And you can see just how quickly he's driving away, too. Sort of just barely keeping up right now because of the draft, but you're going to see it here in three and four just how much faster the AI currently are than me. Again, don't know if it's this damage, but again, we were even slow before the damage happened, so really weird after pit I don't know if something does change after the pit stops but it certainly feels like it as white flag is out for the leader two laps to go for us of course I'll tell you what we are very close on fuel but we should be able to get back around here currently looks like we may sit p12 maybe p13 if Kirk can get up to us so not horrible but definitely the incident on pit road with Dale Jr. derailed our race very quickly after that so we take the white flag one more time around here at Lowe's Motor Speedway but I can still deal with a top 20 position that's what our goal has been for some of these faster tracks this season just trying to improve on where we were last year and again we have a nice upgrade coming at the end of this race that we will need to build new engines for so we come through three and four for the final time. Kurt Busch taking a look down to our inside. Bit of contact there. And we will come across the line. P12 in the Coca-Cola Racing Family 600. A rare caution-free race. Whoa, that doesn't happen very often. It makes you pay a whole lot more for any mistakes. You don't have the cushion of yellow flags to get caught up. This has been NASCAR Winston Cup Racing, brought to you by EA Sports and MRN. We'll see you next week at Dover. So with three power upgrades, it is time to once again take a look at our chassis here. As even then, our next engine power. Uh, that is a lot of money and a long time to do so. So it's going to be a while before we can do that. But I'm thinking we work on the downforce of our car here. 900k, it'll be done in six races. Go ahead and get that done. And we'll be able to do our uh, new engines, which should be available in just a couple races. So up next is Dover, a track I am not looking forward to. As you well know, I am not the biggest fan of Dover in this game. Taking a look at the Jackpot 5, Dale Jarrett was eligible so he does take home the million dollars our next chance to qualify will be at daytona and just to confirm here so we're currently p13 in the standings not bad and just to check that fantasy car not in the top five however dale jr has quite the healthy lead over dale jarrett if you enjoyed this video be sure to leave a like subscribe for more and i will see you in the next video bye